Good morning. Uh, my name is Robert Klein. I'm chairman of the governing board. It's a pleasure uh, to be with you today and to have these distinguished speakers and uh, patient speakers uh, with us. It is uh, <clears throat> very personal to me that we have a program on Alzheimer's since my mother uh, has the disease and has gone through the entire pathway uh, an extraordinary pathway, which is almost impossible to understand from the outside. Uh, having a patient speaker here is, is very helpful for, to make the transition and see it from the eyes of someone who is fighting this disease with great spirit and dedication, uh, but with great hope. <clears throat> There's four and a half million people uh, in the United States that have Alzheimer's disease. Uh, when with an aging population, it's expected there will be 20 million people in the United States with this disease by 2050. It's the third uh, leading cause of death behind cancer and heart disease. And 5% of the people over 65 have the disease with those percentages climbing uh, with age. To lead off today and introduce our speakers <clears throat> is a dedicated uh, patient advocate member of our board, uh, Lisa Gibbons. Lisa was there in 2004 when we launched uh, Proposition 71 in Los Angeles. Uh, she was a keynote speaker with Nancy Reagan and Michael J. Fox at the Los Angeles launch event. Uh, it was a phenomenal way to put this really on the top tier of the news and uh, give us the earned media that we couldn't pay for at the time to give us the recognition of the real possibility of this program that helped build the momentum uh, that we so desperately needed. <clears throat> From that event, uh, there were newspaper coverages in 50 of the 60 largest metropolitan newspapers in the United States. Uh, it is important to have distinguished uh, uh, individuals of great celebrity uh, because they draw the public in. And Lisa, as you know, uh, had a tremendous <clears throat> television and entertainment uh, career. But in terms of her specific experience in the area of chronic disease and stem cell uh, research, we need to understand that it's, she has years of dedication behind the Lisa Gibbons Memory Foundation that has eight offices uh, around the United States. Uh, Lisa's Place is a, a signature program that offers free uh, services and support to caregivers who are newly diagnosed with neurological disorders. It's located in the cities from coast to coast. Lisa's Place fulfills a promise Lisa made to her mother to take her story and make it count. Lisa Gibbons. Good morning. Thank you so much to Bob. Thank you for the privilege of being there in 2004, for the incredible opportunity, and for the great, great honor of being a part of the ICOC, the most passionate and purpose-driven group of people I have ever known. It is really uh, an impressive thing to be a part of an organization that is so focused and takes so seriously its charge and its mission, which is to be the fastest path to escalate the course for all of those soon to be discovered treatments and remedies and vaccines and ultimately cures to get into the lives of patients and their families. That's what we're all about. That's what this spotlight and all of the spotlights focused on disease is about to, to raise awareness and to light the fire under the sense of urgency that we all so desperately share. And if you are one of the families waiting and hoping for your cure for Alzheimer's disease, then you know how desperately we need to have it. If you're familiar with the Thief of Memories, as Bob said he is, as I am, as many of you are, then you know how insidious it is when it breaks into your brain, rewrites your life story. It's not only the long goodbye, it's death in slow motion. I think it's the ultimate bad guy. 
But for every bad guy that's out there, there is a hero. There are the good guys. And we have incredible good guys to share with you today. Uh, Dr. Rod Schenkel will be here, Dr. Frank LaFerla. And in just a second, we're going to start out with, I think, the best shining examples of the incredible hope and resilience that Alzheimer's families have. People dealing with memory loss have to kind of figure out a new way of being in the world. And there's a door closed here, so they go around. And the window shuts here, so they find another way. And that's what Dick and Nancy have done. And you're going to hear from them in, um, in just a second. My dog in the hunt is my mother. We buried her in May. Uh, it took her a decade to disappear behind the veil of Alzheimer's disease. And I saw her bury her mom, my fabulous granny, from the same disease. And I have three kids who look to me and they want to know, well, wait a minute, are you next? And so you bet I'm fighting for my family. I'm fighting for those almost five million other families that deal with Alzheimer's and dementias. But I'm also fighting for any family that faces chronic illness, that faces the devastation of having your domestic bliss shattered because of disease. As this group knows all too well, it requires Herculean efforts to continue to stay the course when your family is unraveling at the seams. And that's why, that's exactly why we do what we do. With Alzheimer's, it's, and by the way, Bob mentioned Lisa's Place. That's why we created Lisa's Place. These are free support centers. They're all over the country. Uh, we actually now have 11 of them, and they are growing like crazy. And we help caregivers and the family, the diagnosed individual and the family, navigate through their path of challenge. Because it's so frustrating, and it's so isolating, and there's so much depression. There's so many dead ends. You need a coach. You need someone to wrap a blanket of support around you and to say, what is it? Is it a diagnosis? Is it a support group? Is it art therapy? Is it humor? Is it a night out? Is it a, a coffee club? Whatever it is, we will create it to help you identify the resources in your community. And we started with neurological disorders, and we realized that the challenge of facing a downward spiraling disease is the same no matter what the disease. And so now we're seeing families with autism and uh, families that deal with cancer and MS and Parkinson's, and so it's um, a real blessing to share these struggles and to hopefully play a part in, uh, in creating at least a little bit of, of sanity while we're waiting for these cures to happen. With Alzheimer's disease, you have to really personalize it, as Bob said. If at the end of the day and the end of a life, if we are our collection of experiences, that's what we're doing here today. We're making a memory. We're collecting an experience. Who you loved and where you went and what you did, that's, that's your soul print. That's what makes you who you are, right? So when you have Alzheimer's disease, it's like short-circuited. And so you get to the point in life where all that should be nourishing you and validating you for a life well-lived, and it's gone. So it really does beg the question, if we don't know who we are, then who are we really, doesn't it? And I think it is unbearably cruel, and it's unacceptable. So we're all on this joint path to try and change the story. And certainly the, the scientists that we have today are, are a big part of that. My mom's body was very strong up until the end. But for the past, for the, I guess the last five years, she became silent. This was after the cursing and the screaming and the kicking and the throwing, of course. And she was vacant, and she was motionless for years, just blank-eyed drooling on her bed where they would have to put her on the floor so she wouldn't fall, and they'd have to turn her in the awful indignities that many of you know all too well. But I knew that we had lost her to the grips of Alzheimer's. I knew we weren't going to get her back. When we were at this, uh, we have juvenile diabetes in our family. It's amazing the similarities with you, Bob. Uh, we were at a fundraiser for the JDRF. And uh, my mother, beautiful woman, and she was wearing this turquoise gown. And we were all there, and we were having a lovely time. But we couldn't find mom. And 
we darted around from corner to corner looking for her, and I saw her on the other side of the room, and she was unzipping this gown. And she started to take it off, and I ran as quickly as I could to get to her. Mom, what are you doing? And she said, I'm getting ready for bed. And by the time I got to her, she, the gown was at her ankles, and my mother stood there in this room of people at a black tie gala in her bra and panties. And the visual of it just, just still makes my heart break for her. So I am so inspired by her example. Uh, I am so aware every day of the turquoise dress. I don't know why, but that image replays in my mind many times. And my dedication to finding hope and help is based on seeing so many families who know how depleting this is. Alzheimer's and memory disorders, they, they, they rob spiritually and emotionally and physically, it's exhausting, financially, it's depleting, and so it just sucks in everybody. But it has not sucked in Nancy and her husband Dick.